But I would, I would submit to you this morning that this past weekend, our country was attacked. Our state was attacked. Our church was attacked. Glory to God, our people were attacked. But last weekend, men, women, and children also fought and died for the freedom that we have here this morning, I believe. Amen. We are not angry that we are not going out and calling for this and calling for that. Folks, we have the freedom to choose, and rather than choose darkness, as the one young man did that day, I say we choose life. And by choosing life, amen. By choosing life, we have life and shall give life and shall share life, and the life is Jesus Christ. Love never fails. It will not. And that is why that building later on today will be open to the public. This is something that I haven't seen done in other catastrophes. But guys, I want the world to know that that building will be open so that everyone who walks in there will know that the people who died live for their Lord and Savior would want them to live for the same as well. Amen. One of the ladies that, that is no longer with us, she told me many, many times, if I could give my life so that one would come to know Christ, it would make it all worthwhile. Amen. I, I, know, I don't have a clue how many names, how many folks have come to Christ since this last weekend, but I personally know of 11 people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I believe that that building, that memorial down there, will be a testimony to the realization of many people and to the fact God is not dead. Amen. Amen. Satan may have attacked and thought he had a victory for a moment. But God is multiplying tenfold what he's going to do there. I, I am actually, don't, don't get me wrong, my heart breaks. But I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Because like I said before, I don't understand. But I know my God has a plan. And the more I see what has transpired up to that weekend and since, how can we have Thanksgiving in a time like this? Because I thank my Lord, my God, that those 26 that are no longer with us, are dancing in his presence today. It is we who are left behind that are having to struggle. And I think together we can come together in that struggle and say, thank you, Jesus, that we have one another, that we have you, Lord, and that we know where our friends and our loved ones and our family now reside. In Genesis 3.15, he says, I will put hostility between you and the woman between your seed and her seed, he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And this is why to God's old covenant people, this was a verse that was a beacon of hope. To Satan, it was a declaration of war. But folks, we need to be aware and understand this morning that victory has a price. Victory has a price. Christians suffer wounds. You cannot be victorious in battle without also being wounded in battle. Wounds come. In the text this morning, God is announcing victory. He is saying that we are going to have victory, but he is also announcing the victor will be wounded. We can't allow this act that happened last weekend to keep us from church. We can't allow it to use it as an excuse why we can't or should not go to church. We can't allow that act to let us turn heinous and ugly as the darkness would have us to be. The victors, to be victors, which I have read the end of the book, we are, Amen. means you have to get in a fight. And if you get in a fight, even if you're the biggest, burliest one in the fight, you're still going to get hurt somewhere. Yeah. If you're not, then you wasn't fighting we're not going to be crowned unscathed, folks. To have victory, there has to be wounds. To have victory, there has to be scars. I believe this scar cuts deep. I believe this scar hurts. 
But Satan wounds those who fight him the most. Satan wounds those that he is worried about the most. And by him coming in and causing such scarring as he did last week, that means he was scared to death of what was taking place in Wilson County. And that's what we got to hold on to, guys. That's what we got to wrap our arms around. We need to be careful, guys, uh, uh, that not to, to, to fall into remorse. Don't just because we lose a round to Satan does not mean quit. As Christians, Satan's whispering in your ear, just give up. Look what happened. He might even be whispering in your ear, God forbid, but he may be saying it might be you next time. Don't allow the whispers to knock you down. You keep covering up, and when it's your turn to swing, you stick that fist out there and you let God drive it and watch how Satan falls to the ground. The enemy realizes time is short, guys. He does. He knows. He knows he cannot win. And for that reason, he wants to cause you and I and every Christian as much pain as he possibly can. Saints get wounded. Saints have scars. But saints also keep right on fighting. We keep right on moving. If you don't have any scars, you don't have any of those wounds, I'd have to ask, are you really fighting? Are you really in the battle? Because if you're on the front lines of any engagement, things are going to happen. The enemy wounds those who fight against him. Satan wounds those who he feels as a threat to him. Is that you this morning? I know it was Sutherland Springs or he wouldn't have moved so mightily. However, I submit to you today that just because we are wounded doesn't mean to turn back. We should fight harder because we are wounded. Amen. Amen. I say do not allow the lives that have been lost or changed to be in vain. Look at your brothers and sisters in Christ that laid down their life for what they believed in. In, the, in where they thought they could have R&R. &R. The enemy attacked from behind. But that's okay. Because my God saw everything there and I serve a captain, a general, a God who's going to make sure that there will, there will be consequences to those actions. Amen. Amen. I know every single name. I know everyone who gave their life that day, some of which were my best friends, one my daughter. <laughs> and I guarantee you, beyond any shadow of a doubt, they are dancing with Jesus today, and they would tell you where they are. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Amen. Thank you. God gets the glory. And guys, let me say this, and then I'll get down. I know it's hard for many of you to be here today, but you're here, and you're standing, and you're clapping, and you're praising the Lord. But what about in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? That's when you need to stand, clap, and praise the Lord. Don't allow this to be a, 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 a decision of emotion. Make this a decision of victory. I know who wins. I've read the end of the book. If you have it, let me share it with you one day. And I choose to be on the winning side. What is your choice this morning? Amen. I think First Baptist Church Seguin is coming up.